Good afternoon. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Presiding at this Mass is Father Mark Rezel with Deacon Springer. A few announcements. Please wait for the ushers to direct you to communion at the end of Mass. Um, and at the end of Mass, please stay in place until the ushers dismiss your role. Also a reminder that we have been asked to refrain from congregational singing per archdiocesan guidelines. At this Mass, we welcome first communicants. Andrew Arujo, Elizabeth Arujo, Lily Caldwell, Timothy Estep, Thomas Four, Lauren Hardigan, Lila Hinsdale, Ava Kong Wong, Alicia Luke, Margaret Nemec, Zach Reepmeyer, and Timothy Skovich, together with their families. May God bless them as they receive Jesus in the Eucharist today. Please rise. Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you always. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our need for mercy, ask God to forgive any sins we may have committed. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, not for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for the good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last weekend in the Gospel, we heard three parables. Wheat and weeds, mustard seed, and yeast. Tonight in the gospel, we hear three more parables. Buried treasure, perfect pearl, and the contents of the fisher's net. Often when Jesus taught, he used parables. Word plays that employ ordinary images to imprint the heart and the mind so that our ears and our eyes will hear and see in ways that we have never heard or seen before. While the intermingled weeds and wheat 
and the eclectic hall of the net are intended to draw our attention to the final judgment, tonight I invite us to consider the joy of discovering the hidden treasure and the painstaking pursuit of the precious pearl. While the first is an image of the unexpected, and the second the conclusion of a long search, both are examples of God's way of reigning resulting in sheer joy and wonder. There are times when we experience life as too good to be true. We use words like incredible and unbelievable when we are overwhelmed by goodness. These experiences of wow can be for us parables, a glimpse at a facet of the divine mystery. To what shall we liken the reign of God? It is a picnic without ants or mosquitoes or rain or having to wear masks. It is a hole-in-one at a charity golf outing. It is finding a parking space in front of your destination with money still in the meter. To what shall we liken the reign of God? It is purchasing park place, then throwing snake eyes and purchasing boardwalk on the next roll of the Monopoly dice. It is the enthusiasm of young people in the particular way at this Mass the enthusiasm of those receiving their first Holy Communion. It is having the whole world reflecting on the same scripture readings that we have just heard proclaimed. The reign of God can be parabolically likened to an experience of unexpected generosity. It is how we feel when an announcement is made with great joy, when we receive a present and it isn't even our birthday when our work is appreciated, when we hear ourselves quoted, when others laugh at our jokes, when we are included, invited, and welcomed. To what shall we liken the reign of God? It is a walk-off home run by your favorite player on your favorite team. It is a new checkout line opening up as you approach the counter. It is when those who were estranged metaphorically join hands while maintaining pandemic distancing. It is when we are reconciled with the one with whom we have refused to speak. It is good food, good drink, good company. When we experience life as too good to be true, we have two choices. We can either be careful, because it may be a scam, and you need not be a cynic to know there's no such thing as a free lunch. But maybe the better choice is to rejoice. For like the parable, this may be an example of the divine mystery breaking into the human condition. When life is too good to be true, then the limits that we have placed on truth must be pushed back by faith. In these moments of grace, we glimpse the resurrection, the authentic continuity between the Jesus of history and the Christ of faith. Incredulous for sheer joy and wonder, we rid ourselves of all distractions, selling everything so that as disciples, our lives can proclaim God's faithfulness and preach the hope-filled message of Christ's victory over sin and death. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate to the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The head of the household brings from the storeroom both new and old. In the tradition of our faith, we present the needs that we have today. Lord, hear our prayer. Lloyd, hear our prayer. For all of our first communicants, may they always find strength in Jesus, the bread of life. We pray to the Lord. Lloyd, hear our prayer. That racism and prejudice may be eliminated in our society so that all people may look upon one another as sisters and brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lloyd, hear our prayer. That the parishioners of St. John of the Cross and St. Gall may grow in wisdom and understanding, using these gifts to build up the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the sick, especially for Joe Petrovic, John Schmidt, and Betty Fash, and all those listed in our bulletin, that they may find comfort in the peace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Lucelle Drescher, mother of Kimberly Debs and Kurt, may rejoice with all the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those we remember at this Mass, may they know God's love especially. Charles Sergru, Robert Lachetti, Michelle Montalto. And for those prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, whose kingdom gathers believers of every kind, be pleased to grant the prayers that we offer in faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, 
the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up for the and Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word, you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you have made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all of the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ on the day before he was to suffer. On the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Father, 
as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons and your entire people. Grant that all of the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, all of the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. John of the Cross, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, for the, the kingdom, kingdom and power and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other a gesture of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray that this gift, which he himself gives us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. This is standing room only according to the state of Illinois and the Archdiocese of Chicago. We max out on reservations. So a reminder to those particular those watching that the registration regis reservation is required. Thanks to all who have made things beautiful throughout this month of July as we've returned to First Communions and to publicly worship. And um, we're taking steps in the right direction. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ, giving God glory by our lives. Thanks be to God.